Hello, 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 and welcome. We are here for our happy at home for April the 14th. And I am so excited that you're here to join me for this live session. And let me make sure I'm on the right one. Yeah, I think this is good. So I think we're good to go. I think we're running. So if you want to give me a comment or something here to let me know that things are live and it's good, then that would be great. Uh, yeah. Okay, so today we are going to talk about texture paste. And honestly, this is a super fun topic. Hello, hello, Sagina. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about texture paste. Super fun topic. You can do so many different things with it. And so I brought out a few different things. I was uh, scrambling to grab all the fun stuff. Uh, I didn't get it all. Uh, but I think that we can have some fun with all of the things. And we'll put some... Um, I'll just show you how much fun we can have with it. So that's the plan. I have all of my stencils out here on my desk. I also grabbed my packet of uh, Vicki Booten foundation paper because I still have quite a bit of it in here and we better get it used up. So <laughs> Jenny says it looks good. Thank goodness. <laughs> Today is office day, so I'm always scrambling a little bit for, for uh, Thursday. So. Thursday being office day is a pretty busy day for me. Okay, so I'm gonna pull off this foundation paper. Now one thing, if you've seen this in a store or you've seen this online and you're looking to buy the this paper, it doesn't look like this. This is just an idea of all the fun that you can have when you get the paper. It's actually a pack of plain paper that is really quite thick, good for doing mixed media on. So it's called the Vicki Booten Foundation Paper. Uh, this pack has 12 sheets in it. It's 12 by 12, it's 140 pounds. So that's a really, really heavy weight paper. Um, anybody that's using the grams per meter squared, 300. 300 so if you uh if you use that for your measurements instead in canada it's really funny we have the metric system and we use it for like two things <laughs> like we barely ever use metric um even though we technically are on metric um so it's really funny our speed in canada is set in kilometers per hour um Technically at the grocery store, we buy things in kilograms. Like if you're buying apples or pears or something, you're buying it in um, in kilograms. However, they actually put the pounds bigger than the kilograms on the sign because we totally don't know how much a kilogram is when we're talking about fruit and different things like that. So we still measure our food by the pound, even though they sell it to us in kilograms. And it's just, we're in this weird, weird, place so um yeah when I talk about paper I know what 140 pound paper is but don't ask me what that 300 grams per square meter is literally no idea that that doesn't make sense to me because I just haven't had the practice okay so this is a fun I have so many things out what did you guys think yesterday oh my gosh we had so much fun talking about different ways to get creative with your scrapbooking. I shared about a hundred million layouts. <laughs> At least it felt like it. We looked through tons of really fun things that I have tried in my albums when creating. I really think that as we, you know, try new things and explore um, what's possible in scrapbooking that that's when we end up having the most fun and honestly like if we're not having fun we're doing it wrong right this is supposed to be fun it's it's a great hobby okay I need to pick a um, I need to pick a stencil and that's always the hardest part so let's take a look through here and see what you guys think where where should we go so we've got this nice heart one um here's another one that's really fun i haven't played with it too much because it's fairly new still why is it sticking to oh yeah those label things they uh 
sometimes catch on the edge. Um, this one's really fun. I like this heart one. So I haven't played with that a lot yet. What's missing? Ooh, I've got apparently some stencils to put away. Ooh, I haven't played with this one very much. I've done a little bit of color. Um, not feeling like words. We've got circles, which can be great. There's mandalas, good for certain things. This, I'd have to do more taping, so let's not go there. Let's just use one that I can just tape. Gina says, I loved yesterday, one of my favorite. Oh, thank you. I haven't played with this big circle one at all yet. Well, let's see what I got in geometrics. I, I especially love a good geometric. Um, the stars, one of my all-time favorites. I also love these. I've got to love some of that. Hmm so many good choices Ooh, i really haven't played with this let's do this one i haven't played with this one at all yet and either and it's it's called mining block so if anybody has like the kids that are into the uh minecraft i think that's kind of the idea here it just reminded me of mazes and technically it's not connected like a maze but it reminded me of that so we'll pull that one for now Ooh, yeah this is good too lots of fun things let's uh we'll start there and we'll keep going because we'll have time to do more than one i think now one of the things that i like to do when i'm playing with my stencils is um Oh, this one fits inside. Nice. Interesting. Um, so one of the things that I like to do when playing with stencils is um, I don't always fill them right up. So let's just say like I might do just a swash of a stencil on a corner and an opposite corner. That's really famous for me to do. Some people do like three sections to kind of create that visual triangle. Oh my gosh, if you guys want to talk about design, seriously, go and listen to the clubhouse that we had yesterday. Amazing. We talked about all of the elements of design, all these different design principles, and we just really dug into why we love some of them, why we don't love some of them, how they help us, why we break the rules, if you can call them rules. Donna says she had trouble getting connected today. I hadn't pre-scheduled it like I normally do, so then it wasn't probably set up in my YouTube because yesterday I didn't know what our topic was gonna be, so I hadn't set it up. And then I forgot because I was in the office all morning. <laughs> so sorry about that. But you can always go to um, uh, youtube.com slash scrap happy slash live, L-I-V-E. And that brings you right to somebody's live stream. So sneak pe sneaky trick for getting into a live. Okay, so I'm gonna cover up these corners and pin them down, and we will play with these mining blocks. So fun. And so you can, um, we're gonna use this modeling paste. This is a Liquitex light modeling paste, gel medium, it's called gel medium. I also have another jar of it because this one's getting a little low. And this one is called Flexible Modeling Paste Gel Medium. I think they're the same thing. <laughs> I think they're the same thing, but I'm not 100% sure. So yeah, um, when you're using this, you don't have to do gesso first. You can just put it straight on your page and it creates some really fun textures, which is what I will show you today. Um, yeah, and you can paint on it and um, they kind of tell you a little bit of the details. It's, is it fluid? No, it's thick. So they've got little lines on here, kind of telling you a little bit about it. Preparation, paint or finish. I have no idea what that means. Fluid or thick. They've kind of drawn the line here. Um, matte or gloss. This one's more matte and transparent or opaque. And it's more opaque. So they, you can see they've got like a little slider kind of on there and they were kind of showing you I don't exactly know what this one they say it's like paint a matte opaque preparation of marble dust and polymer emulsion Ooh, techie dries slowly to a very hard flexible surface and that flexible part is the part that I think is really important permanent non-yellowing flexible and water resistant when dry Mix with any acrylic color or apply paint to the dried surface. 
mix with any amount of Liquitex mediums to alter the sheen, opacity, and body. Do not mix with oils. Um, abrade non-porous surfaces for better adhesion. So we're using paper, not a big deal. Um, do use to build heavy textures and three-dimensional forms on flexible or rigid supports. So basically, when you put this on your paper, you're not going to bend your paper and it'll fall off, right? So that's why the whole flexible thing is important. Um, yeah, so that's what we have. And we need an applicator, which I thought was on my desk because I couldn't find it. <laughs> so I'm hoping it's here on my desk somewhere. And uh, it'd be pretty bad if we do a texture paste day and don't have an applicator. Um, it wasn't over by my sink. That's why I was thinking, yeah, it's got to be here. Uh, um, water tins. I usually just shove all the things up around everything that's off the screen so that it's out of the way. Uh, let's have a look. Did I not set it here? Did I leave it over there? I found it. Found it. I told you it'd be right here. Oh my gosh, this is real life, you guys. Have you ever wondered? <laughs> real life lives here. Um, oh, I've got one of my albums attacking me over here. And my stencils have fallen over. Okay, good. So let's open this up and I'll kind of give you a show. Like, we've got this pasty stuff down in the bottom. And this one is like a thicker, like it's almost the texture of fondant. I would say it's similar to fondant and you can apply it pretty easy like where you want on your um, on your paper and so I uh, I didn't have to tape off around the edges because you can really um, just get it where you want to put it right and so it's pretty thick but it's pretty easy to work with um, to kind of make it go where you want. Now, one of the things that I really like about this, and if you can kind of see the texture already as I'm laying it down, if you want it really smooth, you can smooth it out and make it a lot smoother. And if you want to have more texture, you can also add more texture to it. And so depending on what you're bringing to it, you can use other things that also provide texture. For example, I have this thing. Uh, it's a, like a paintbrush on one end, but it has like this little rubbery end. After uh, April was like, hey, you don't have one of these things? I'm like, no. But then I found this thing and I'm like, ooh, so you can add extra like lines or texture. This isn't a great um, stencil for this like if you had an open space or you're just applying it directly on the page without a stencil then that might be better but like this isn't kind of like gonna make the the greatest results so I'll smooth smooth that out um, like any kind of mixed media stuff you kind of have to open it and use it now this one I have to say I've had it open for a while so it's been holding up really good for me but mixed media it's not going to last forever it's not one of the things that you can like buy it and keep it in your stash forever and ever so use it or lose it right <laughs> like that's basically what i what i would say is use it or lose it because it's um gonna dry up it's gonna dry out it's not gonna it's not gonna last forever so we're gonna put some up in this top corner I don't know, maybe I'll cover this whole thing. That could be cool. Um, so I'm smearing it in here. And I just love to create custom backgrounds. I think that um, with drying time that you need to allow these things to properly dry, it makes sense to kind of have a creative background day and then to have a different day where you plan on um, actually using the backgrounds that you create. So right now it's April and next month we have our load challenge coming up, the build your story. 
And with a theme like build, right, it's based on architecture. And I think that that would be really fun. Let me have a look here. Here's the, the inspiration. So it's a build your story. We're going to scrapbook every day in May inspired by architecture. Well, Minecraft is all about building stuff, right? And my kids played a little bit of Minecraft, not a lot. Like they were a little older by the time um, they found it, I think. So it wasn't one of their biggest things. They did a little. So it's not like I have that to kind of go with, but because this is actually inspired by building stuff and people build whole worlds in their Minecraft and they build structures and they're building all of these different things, this will probably make a pretty cool background for one of the stories that I end up telling uh, next month during the load challenge. So just think that will be kind of neat. So I'm not going around the edge. The edge of this stencil does have extra stuff, and but I'm not gonna run it right to the edge of that stencil. Yeah, I'm just doing the whole thing now. I've decided it's gonna be cool. And then we'll do something fun over top of it. So that'll be extra fun. So once I've got this kind of smeared and smooth, it's, I'm not gonna go too smooth. I think a little bit of texture is fun. Um, yeah, I think it's better with a little texture, honestly. Um, but this stuff, you can make it pretty thick. So you can see when I put a swipe on there, no, you can't because I left the image on there, Alice. <laughs> well, you can see when I put a swipe on here, you could leave it thick like that, like really quite thick. And that's okay. It's not gonna all just flake off and chunk off. So it's kind of neat. Oh, I think I caught a hair in here. Am I shedding? <laughs> Let's get that out of there. Okay. And honestly, I've used this stuff quite a bit and it also cleans up good. So, you know, I've talked about some of the things that um, don't clean up well, like paints and stuff. This texture paste cleans up a lot better. It just washes right off of your stencils. So I don't even mind that part of the process either. Okay. So let's see, did I get all of these little pieces? And then I'm gonna take a little extra out of here. This is almost empty, which is why I have another jar. <laughs> and I'm just gonna add like a little extra texture here and there and get some of this all lined up. So question to you, have you used a texture paste before? Now, it doesn't have to be like this kind of texture paste. Have you done anything that applies some kind of texture to your layouts? Like, what have you used? What have you tried? Is this like the first time you're ever seeing this and you're like, ooh, I've never done that before. <laughs> I love to know. So tell me, have you used a texture paste? What did you use? Do you know what you used? Did you do it as part of a class? Did you experiment on your own? I think that's one of the things, right? Sometimes we have to see somebody using something before we would know what to even do. If you just saw this on a shelf, say even at a scrapbook store, would you know what to do with it? Probably not, right? Unless somebody says, oh, by the way, this stuff is so cool. You can do this thing or you can do that thing. Okay, so do I cut a little texture on here? A little texture. It's not, I don't want it too perfect, right? Smooth-ish is better, in my opinion. Smooth-ish. Just make sure I have all the spaces filled in them. Okay, so I've got that on there. We'll put a lid on this. I probably don't have enough in there to even do another project, actually. Um, and I'm just gonna grab paper towel and I'm just gonna wipe this off for right now but uh, you know I'll wash it off after does nouveau glitter paste count absolutely nouveau glitter paste would count um, the nouveau um, I have the glacier paste from nouveau and this stuff is like super nice so I think we're gonna try smearing some of that 
potentially over top. I've also done some mists over top of this. I've also done watercolor, just a little brushing of watercolor over top. I think that's what we'll do right now is the watercolor. Um, and then we'll do a different one with some Nuvo. So that, okay, so that's good. You could take that off and leave it, but I think we can have more fun. So <laughs> wouldn't want to stunt our fun. And so we're gonna take, um, I brought out these Vicki Booten um, paints, or not paint, they're watercolors, watercolor markers. And I'm gonna pull out a couple of colors. I've got some greenish ones and it's like, and a bluish one. Is it blue or purple? Blueberry pie. Is there a purple? Oh yeah, her purple one is a little on the, the pale side of purple. Okay, we may or may not use the purple. And now I'm gonna grab a brush. I could use this brush. Actually, I may just dauber it on. Let's have a look at that. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my lighter green and get some of this on. Diane says she used the glacier paste once. <laughs> Isn't that the true part of how this goes sometimes? Once. Sometimes we get this stuff and we're like, oh, cool. And then you use it once and you're like, oh, that was, an, that was okay. I should try that again. And you know, sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't. Don't feel bad if you don't go back to it. Did you love it? Maybe you loved it, maybe you didn't. I love the, the Glacier Paste. It's easy for cleanup and it was easy to apply. It's so creamy when you put it on. Oh, I love that. Okay, so I'm just gonna pick this up on my little trowel here and I'm gonna start applying it over top of this. Just in a few areas. And if it's too dark, I can just keep mixing it and it gets a little lighter in those spots, right? I've uh, got some on the other side. So you can see there was a darker area and I'm just gonna keep mixing it, pulling it up a little bit. And we're gonna spread this onto, onto here. Okay. Okay. I think that's good. Changing colors into something that was totally different. I would maybe clean this, but I'm gonna go with a whatever this color is. This one is the blue Hawaiian, so it should be kind of tealish or something, right? And I'm just squeezing this so that I can bring more paint of the watercolor down into the end of the, the thing. That's kind of how they work. The first color was Juicy Pear. Now we're gonna try some of this blue Hawaiian. Oh yeah, see that's pretty. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna smoosh some of this in here. A little smooshy smooshy. And it's even better where it's really mixing actually. I'm really seeing that it's looking cool. Now this isn't gonna look pretty right yet, right? I'm I'm uh it's not gonna look pretty yet. <laughs> Right? And I think that's important to know that sometimes it just looks like a hot mess when you're just smooshing it all over and you're like, oh God, what did I do? Don't worry. This is mixed media. You, it, it, it takes like, you got to get to the finish line. <laughs> um, did you try ever mixing the color in the paste before putting it down? I haven't actually. I've always just applied a little bit of color over top. Um, you probably could but that's like an extra step and you'd have to blend it and try to really smooth it out or something. And I'm like, yeah. So no, I haven't. I've just like gone in and been lazy. <laughs> Does that count? <laughs> it's so nice to see you, Heather. I feel like I haven't seen you enough lately. You must have had your head down, been working a lot. <laughs> that happens, right? Um, yeah, uh, what's my other green? Okay, so I got another green here. This is Watermelon Burst. So we're gonna go in with some Watermelon Burst. Come on, squish it out, squish it out. A little more ink, a little more. Give me that ink. It's not ink, it's, uh, it's watercolor. <laughs> um, there we go. So this is a little more greenish 
like a darker green. Oh, it's looking pretty similar, honestly, to the other one. I guess it has a little darker green. It's looking awfully this much the same. So let's muck this in here, get a little bit of that there. And I'm just doing this while the stencil is still on so that I can get just the spots that have my texture paste with this. I'm gonna switch this just to make sure that I've got a little bit cleaner here. I guess I could have used the other one, whatever. And this is the blueberry pie. Let's get it flowing down to the end here. Uh, I'm trying to get the thesis done, she says. Oh, doing all the hard work. It's good, it's good. Hopefully it's going well for you. So, I love, uh, I love all the things that we all get into. Heather's going back to university. She's doing her English thesis, correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, I'm feeling this blue looks awfully blue to me. <laughs> like, it's like, wow, that one's really blue after all these other colors. But that's okay. We'll uh, get some of this in here. If I don't like it, I can always like smear a little more stuff in there. Right, so. I'll show you in a second because I think I might go and just tone this blue down a little tiny bit. It's feeling really bright. Okay. Okay. And I'm swiping all kind of in one direction because I think that will that will look cool like back and forth that kind of direction, but I think it'll look kind of cool on the little blocks once we've got them in here. Okay, does the blue look too blue? Oh yeah, it looks way too blue. Way too much. Okay, it's so bold, it's such a bright color. Okay, what I'm gonna do, because I'm feeling like it's kind of overpowering things here, I'm just gonna take this and wash this off of here off this mat. See, I didn't even need water here. I can just kind of get this stuff off. Okay. Throw that in the garbage this time. Um, I'm going to go into that pretty empty thing. Masters in English 18th century. Woo! Fetsy! I love it. Well, maybe I love it for you, not for me. <laughs> she says she likes the darker color. I'm feeling that it's overtaking some of the stuff. So I don't have a lot of this left. So I'm going into this um, jar because it's pretty much empty, right? And I'm just gonna smear a little bit more of this white over top of these really bold blue areas. Now, as long as I clean this before going back into the jar, I'd be okay and I wouldn't be transferring the color. See, like you wouldn't wanna transfer the color back in the jar. My jar's empty, so I'm not too uh, worried about that <laughs> right now. Um, but yeah, if, if something is too bright, we can just add a little more and uh, just mute it down just a little, right? It's like, wow, you got really bright. Okay, it feels a little better like that, right? little more texture paste all good you guys are gonna love this reveal I can tell it's gonna be awesome we're gonna have this magical moment in just a moment and it's gonna be like wow that turned out so good <laughs> or at least I hope so <laughs> at least I always hope so I'm like I think it's going good I think so I gotta get this little corner down here see I'm like having a hard time there's not a lot of stuff left in this bottom of this jar Scraping it out good. Making good use of my product. That's what we're doing, right? Maximizing. There we go. I think that's better. Just a little, it's a, just a little softer. I just looked up and saw 
on the camera I can kind of see the parts that are extra dark there we go okay that's good you are ready for the big reveal dun dun dun, dun. Oh yeah, let's put this in the trash because that baby's empty. So let's peel off my corners and we're ready to lift our stencil. Ah! See, it's not pretty. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like when this was on here, just like, oh, kind of hot mess. Just looks like all messy. But once it's done, oh, okay, that's lovely. That's so lovely. Okay, I have to throw this into my sink because I did not bring a bucket here today. <laughs> okay, I don't even have water in this sink. It'll totally come off later. It's not a big deal. That stuff is great. Okay isn't this nice you guys want me to hold it up so you can really see it good let me do that grab the little pieces and let's have a look at the detail now you can see the texture in the the surface you can see the creaminess and how it's smeared and spread and oh yeah I'm just loving it. Like the texture in these ones where you've got like these little valleys and stuff. <laughs> Before you clean off your stencil, why don't you turn it upside down and get the color? Maybe that would maybe work. It's kind of tough. Like the texture paste, I don't think will transfer very well to the next one. Oh my gosh, you guys. I am loving this. <laughs> that turned out so good. <laughs> and you needed um, that thicker paper. Like there's a lot of texture paste on this paper. So you need a thicker paper um, like the Vicky Booten foundation paper. There's actually like a little piece sticking up off of this one right here. I'm just going to pull that little piece off here right now. Put that in the garbage. But yeah, like you can make them quite thick. Yeah, just gorgeous, it's so pretty. And like, you guys saw, was it perfect in the way I was applying it? Absolutely not, absolutely not. Doesn't have to be perfect to be, turn out so good. That's like the magic of mixed media stuff. Okay, okay, let's try another one. Shall we try another one? Let's try another one. Okay, I'm gonna grab another sheet from here. Actually, I'm going to put these markers away first. These babies can sometimes leak. <laughs> Be careful. If you own them, I store them standing up so that all the liquid, sorry, hold it. How can I hold it? All the liquid that's in them stays down in the bottom and isn't up in the things. These are not the ones that you want to store flat. Stand them up. Okay. So if you have the watercolor things and you saw how dark and vibrant they are, there's a lot of pigment in these. <laughs> they are highly pigmented. So stand them up and they will um, do a lot better for you. Okay, so before I lay this on here and pick up messes, we're gonna clean up my workstation. <laughs> right, so cool. Hi, Marsha, Lisa, Diane, seeing all my friends here. Okay, let's just make sure that these little pieces, like it's stained, my mat is a little stained old mat perfect for protecting my pretty pink countertop right that's what it's for are we a little crooked today we are sorry there we go this is my cute little water bottle i ordered it from ladner village crafts they are a little scrapbook store that is co-owned by my friend allison day and she is out in Ladner Village, British Columbia. So that's a favorite little store. And I loved the little water bottle so that I could uh, have a nice little water bottle on my, on my desk. <laughs> okay, so there we go. Hardest to get off of me, off my hand apparently. It's like, how did I even get that there? Good question. Okay, next up, we're gonna grab another piece. I'm just gonna tear it straight off of the pad here. There is a little zip strip or whatever at the top, but it's a lot easier to deal with that once it's off the pad. Okay, 
So that's that. We're gonna stick this down and we're gonna grab a brand new stencil. And we'll go through and do a different effect. Ooh, am I brave enough to try spraying something? I don't know if I am, we'll see. Um, <laughs> Spraying on my desk is like a little scary. I usually uh, either take stuff to my sink to spray or I do have a spray box. Oh, I did have a spray box. It uh, might have gone out. Okay, so we need another stencil. We kind of looked from geometrics here. So let's go back further and see what else we have. Um, fun. Fun. We're heading into my swirly ones. This one looks really pretty with the butterflies. It actually doesn't make a very nice stencil for some things. You gotta really fill in a lot. Uh, the paper is 140 pound. That's the Vicky Booten, um, Vicky Booten Foundation paper, 140 pound weight. Um, this one actually, the other one was prettier. This one I actually didn't like at all when I used that stencil. And somehow I have two of them. They're the same thing. This one is cut in white. This one is cut in black, but it's the same thing. I'm like, great, I have two of them and I don't like them. <laughs> um, let's see, stars and glasses. Oh, let's do some clouds. Okay, let's do some clouds. some clouds okay so we'll stick these down and oh my, can I sneak it just under this other tape and have that hold both of them will that work good question or will the paper slip if I'm doing that I don't want the stuff to slip um, yeah I also really like, um, probably even more than the foundation paper, yes, I said that out loud, um, I actually really like the super stock paper from Creative Scrapbooker magazine. You can find it at creativescrapbooker.ca, and it is one of my favorite. So this stencil, um, the last one and this one are both from Scrapping Reflections, so scrappingreflections.com. I love her stencils. I just love them. So this is one of Sandy's stencils and it is awesome. So there we go. Uh, Marcia says, will regular watercolors work over the texture paste? Yes, yes they will. <laughs> and like this really is just a regular watercolor. It's just liquid in there. So it's kind of condensed. But absolutely, like you don't want to go like super, super wet, right? You're, you're putting it onto this creamy um, paste already, the, the modeling paste. So you don't really want something to, ooh, this one has a different texture, guys. I can see that right now. So it might be a little bit different than the other one that I used. So this one was called light modeling paste. And this one is called flexible modeling paste but they are both a gel medium and uh, literally don't know the difference. So um, the packaging is a little different. So they're bought at different times too. So good, good to know. This one looks creamier. It looks a little creamier, but flexible modeling paste. That's the important part. Heather says, those are the only two types of 12 by 12 I have in my stash, Superstock and Vicky's paper. Mm -hmm. They're so good, right? Uh, okay, so with the clouds, I think I don't want like vertical lines in them so much, but I'll do um, more horizontal. And I don't know if I wanna cover the whole page. I might just do the top few clouds maybe. Cause like, what am I gonna want when I'm actually scrapbooking? Am I gonna want a whole page of clouds? Probably not, right? I'll probably just want like some clouds up near the top. So let's make one that's like that. This stuff spreads a little like smoother. It's slightly more buttery texture than the other one. Um, 
Okay, so I'm gonna do this one and this one. Get these ones filled in and But I like that I can control how much um, how much to use, right? Like it's how smooth you want it, how thick do you want it? I've done some through little circles and I left it like that thick. Like I'm talking quarter of an inch, if not more. Like I left them thick. Uh, I was trying to find that page yesterday. So otherwise I would pull it out I thought I had it right here, but it was not in my Cuba book. I've got it pulled out for something else, obviously, <laughs> because my Cuba one, I used um, some stuff from a tree on it <laughs> and I've got little rocks on it and I've got like all these crazy things. That's why I wanted to show you yesterday when it's like, did you really put that on a page? Ink pad reinkers can also be used, says Misty. Yeah so much fun that you can have with these things. Now you can leave it white. There's absolutely nothing wrong with leaving it white. That's beautiful too. Okay, so I've got this on here and I thought maybe this time we would uh, apply a little bit of the um, Nouveau Glacier paste on it because I haven't actually tried that before and I think that would be fun. So. I might do a little bit of white for the shine and then a little bit of the pink and a little bit of the blue. Because clouds don't really have to be blue, right? If you think about it, my husband was saying this yesterday. He said, Alice, you know how everybody always says the sky is blue? And he's like, it's not really. Like we were actually watching a sunset and it was a glorious sunset. And, uh, you know, he says like part of the sky is sometimes blue but like when people say the sky is blue like that's not really true like it's purple and orange and yellow and red and it's like all of these other colors I'm like that's actually really true <laughs> so I have never used this over top of this but we're gonna go for it Ooh, I haven't used my white one before how fun mm. until you're trying to get into it <laughs> So normally I would just put this stuff straight through, but this will give us extra texture. So we're gonna try it like that. And I'm getting it all over my fingers and this stuff is mica, so I'm gonna be shiny girl. <laughs> I'm gonna be a shiny girl. Okay, we're gonna put it down on my surface so that I can put it in different places on these stencils. Do I even have stuff in there? Did I miss that one cloud completely? potentially <laughs> really good at this you guys really good you got a pro here working with you <laughs> good okay. uh yeah I think uh okay now we'll take some of this and I'm gonna put it on my surface so that I can take it to here without going back into there no contaminating. This is not all the little kids at the veggie buffet where they're taking all their dip and they're double dipping. No double dipping in your mixed media. <laughs> so that's against the rules. <laughs> okay. And this will just add a little bit of shine to these clouds. Like I could be adding all kinds of different colors. In fact, like there's a reason that I bought this cloud stencils because I'm like, I don't use enough of these and I like them on pages. I love having the clouds. I think it's such a fun, a fun thing to stick on them. Okay, so that looks fun. We got some white and I'm just gonna wipe that up and wipe this off. Yeah, mica, ooh, it's gonna be shiny. Um, so some people have used some texture paste. Has anybody used the glacier paste? Seriously, I love this stuff. I love it. I think we should probably do one just through that, right? I'm gonna put some of this on here. Enough, maybe a little, a little touch more. 
Okay, is this gonna line up good? Mm. Come on. I'll put this back on the top. Because it's not drying up, it's actually staying really good, so stay good. Stay good. I want to use you and like can Alice should put a lid on a jar, the question of the day. <laughs> Okay, I think I lined it up right. Okay, now we're gonna, I'm gonna go, I think, along some of the more bottom clouds with the pink. And I'll go back and forth a little bit. The bottoms of the clouds, right? Because sometimes you look at the bottoms of clouds and they can be a little bit of a different color than tops of clouds. So. That's what we'll do kind of here. We'll just smear part of this along the bottoms of these clouds. Um, you know, it's just making it up as you go. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'd love to know, are you working on something while we're playing here together? Are you working on something? What are you working on? And, uh, what kind of what kind of stuff are you doing? Like, are you doing some mixed media? Are you trying something? Are you uh, doing some digital project? Are you like what kind of stuff are you working on today? Or are you just enjoying hanging out with us? Because that's totally fine too. That's totally fine. Today I was in my office, and I'll tell you guys, my uh, bookkeeper that comes and helps us. She is super into personal development and I have been trying <laughs> for a few years now to convince her to actually do it professionally. I'm like, it's not like I want to lose you as my bookkeeper, so don't don't think that. Like, you're not getting off scot-free. <laughs> but she would be so good at helping people with personal development. She's just like, she's done so much training and stuff and she just mostly does it personally, but she loves helping people with it. So it's just kind of funny that she hasn't taken that big step to do it. So I keep encouraging her and I'm like, if you want to do something, you can do it with my community. I'll get people interested and we'll set it up. <laughs> She's like, oh, I'm having panic attacks. I'm like, seriously, this is why you need to do it. <laughs> because you know that, you know, if you're having that much fear over a bit, you're probably supposed to do it. <laughs> you're, you're meant to do this. She is. She's meant to do it. So really, really, uh, I'd really like to see her get into that. Okay. So this, oh my gosh, it's gonna be so pretty. Um, and I think the little bit of modeling texture underneath is just gonna make it extra, um, extra gorgeous. I can't even see some of these clouds through this stencil. <laughs> Cause I've got so much stuff on here. Um, okay, I think that's good. I think these are gonna be beautiful. What do you say? Should we take a look and see what I've done? <laughs> it's like, what have I done? <laughs> Half work day, just hanging out, paying bills. That's good, right? You gotta, gotta get that done. That stuff's important. That's what I was doing every Thursday in the office, <laughs> whether I like it or not, <laughs> which means I don't. <laughs> Such pretty color. Oh yeah, the colors. Okay. Yeah. This is the, the Nouveau Glacier Paste. So I got the white and I think it is called, um, winter white, the pink. Um, I do have a darker pink as well. And I think I have a green one, um, frosted petal. So this is the light pink is the frosted petal. And this bluish colored one is called sea Sprite. Ooh, Misty's rearranging her craft room. So fun. Oh my gosh, what if I knocked over now? So you guys, do you think I'll be able to use this as a piece of acetate on a page? I think that'll make a good piece of, like a good scrapbook page, even though, you know, that wasn't her original intent for that. <laughs> okay, time for a big reveal. Can we take off some of these tapes so it comes off better? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> it's so 
pretty. Oh my goodness. Look at these clouds. Like they have the texture from the texture paste. Like you can get a little bit of texture with your Nouveau, um, with your Nouveau. So if, even if you didn't do this with a texture paste, say you went straight in with your Nouveau, you're going to get a little texture, but the texture that to raise them up, that really came from my paste. Oh, this is just, it's so pretty. Um, yeah, seriously, I feel like a genius right now. I feel like a mixed media genius. This stuff just is so nice. <laughs> uh, check out these clouds. And you see the shine on them from that from the glacier paste. Because like I said, the, the texture paste is opaque, so it's not gonna make them shiny at all. But oh <laughs> I Oh, I love it. I love it. Okay, I'm gonna go throw this one in the sink and we will do another one and we'll play with a different technique. Oh, these are so pretty. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. They could be cupcake icing, right? Playing with this stuff actually feels like cupcake icing. Like it's like, Ooh, so soft and so smooth. Yeah. Oh, yeah, just take a look. Ah, oh, so pretty. It's so pretty. <laughs> okay, we'll put that up there and we'll grab another piece. How much time do I have? Oh my gosh, I'm almost out of time. How did that happen? How did that happen? Okay, we're doing one more. I don't care. We're doing one more. So stay with me if you have the time and we'll hang out. We'll make another one. And if you can't, well, we'll hopefully see you tomorrow. So I've decided I was unsure because of Good Friday and all that. Um, we are going to have another great Friday. I think every year since I've started doing these happy at home sessions, I think every year our um, Easter has been in April. You know how sometimes it's in March, sometimes it's in April. Um, this time it is April and tomorrow is Good Friday. So if you're celebrating Good Friday and you have other stuff going on, then uh, maybe I won't see you tomorrow. But if you uh, don't have other stuff going on and want to hang out, I'm going to do some more crafty stuff tomorrow. So I haven't actually figured out exactly what we're going to do. I'm undecided. Um, but I have a list so I can turn to my list. <laughs> And, and check it out. That's the great thing about having a list. Okay, um, we need another stencil. Should we do a little stencil or a big stencil? I should use a little stencil for something, but we're gonna go back to another big stencil. And actually, I'm gonna go to this one with all the hearts right here. Cause I keep looking at it as we flip through and I'm like, oh, that one's nice. So I've done this one with rainbow stuff before. In fact, you can see that one on my Instagram, I think. Let's turn that this way over here. Um, is it here? Yes, no, yes. Yes, I've done some rainbow stenciling and I'm pretty sure you can see this one on my Instagram. So this is what I've done with this one before, which is pretty, right? Very lovely. Um, but this time we're going to do um, something else. We're going to use the modeling paste and then we're going to use a different thing. Now, I'd love to do some spray, but I don't know if my spray will actually spray. That is like the tragedy of sprays. Sometimes they don't spray. If I use these dilutions ones, I usually do. I'm going to grab another couple colors. I'm gonna grab a couple of more colors and usually the dilution ones actually work because they don't have the little mica bits to plug up your sprayers so usually those work and this could get messy I might have to find a box but we're gonna tape this down first we're gonna do the stuff and if I have to kind of put a little shield up here we'll just do that right we'll just make it work <laughs> That's that's the way. Just make it work. Okay, somewhere I've hidden my tape. It's shocking. There we go. There we go. 
Um, working tomorrow, but may catch you if the day is slow. <laughs> Otherwise, on the replay, says Deborah. Yeah. Working, I know, that stuff. It, uh, it's always there. Some people are traveling. Some people are doing whatever tomorrow. It's uh, lots of stuff. So this this one is from the Crafters Workshop. So this stencil here that I'm using, the Crafters Workshop, it is stencil number TCW, the Crafters Workshop, uh, 791. And so I would say that 90% of my stencils that I love are from Scrapping Reflections or the Crafters Workshop. Those are two of my very favorites for just the designs and styles and they just both make really, really great ones. So we are going to do the, that was the empty one. Uh, we're going to do the, um, the, the modeling paste first and then we're going to try a little bit of spray. <laughs> Francis, hello, honey. I just signed up for the year. Did you join our community, our scrap happy community? Welcome. Welcome. We are, uh, going to do a lot of fun things coming up next month. We have our load challenge, which will be so much fun. Um, so that will get everyone scrapbooking every day. And so a little bit of stuff about load challenge is that we actually scrapbook a layout a day. Um, and within the community, we do this three times a year. So February, May, and October. The ones in February and May, we let people from outside our community come and take the challenge with us. And then the one that we have in October is only for the members because it's hosted by the members. It's by the members for the members. Oh, well, thank you. She said, yes, I did. I joined you. <laughs> and I, um, they're one of my favorite times of the year, the low challenges, because um, every day we have like a theme that we pick for the month. This one, we're going to be doing the build your story inspired by architecture. So like, that's super fun. And then, um, we, we look at something about architecture every day, and then we use that inspiration to lead us to a story prompt and a technique prompt. And so it can be a lot of fun. Um, we've had a lot of different um, low challenges in the past, like Scrap Happy will turn 12 this summer. And um, there's been load challenges, I think, since the beginning. We don't necessarily have access to all of the replays, but all of the ones since I've been in. And this is, shoot, is my sixth year or seventh year? Six, this year's seven years. Seven years. Wow. <laughs> That's been the thing, I think. Um, yeah, wow. Six years, seven years. Oh, it's a lot. 2015. So seven years. That's right. Okay. So yeah that's what um yeah and to, to see for me like getting people to connect with their stories because load for me is very much a storytelling prompt not every day do i do the storytelling prompt but a lot of the days i would say most of the days and for me that really changed what i'm doing as i scrapbook because i um i struggle to tell my stories like i struggle to write journaling journaling was like Ugh, so hard but now with a, with a story prompt, I kind of know where I'm going already, right? I know what story I'm going to tell. So then I just have to go and find the right pictures. And it really helped me refine um, my goal with scrapbooking. Like, what do I want my scrapbooking to be about? Like, I want it to be fun. Fun is like number one. If it's not fun, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm not going to do it if it's not fun. Like, I've seen when I felt overwhelmed and frustrated like back before when I used to just use um the photos and try to scrapbook the photos the whole time I felt this insane pressure to um you know I was always behind because like how do you get caught up you're taking more photos every day and you, like you've got all these backlog all the ones that you haven't scrapbooked yet and that's just overwhelming but now I'm never behind, right? Like I don't have to think about being behind because it's not what it's about. It's about 
documenting the important stories of my life, using these amazing photos that we take to do that, and also having some creative fun while it's while we're doing it. So so good. Okay, I need to put up some kind of little spray tent or something because spray is messy. Um, I'm trying to think if I have a box. I have a box. Oh, I see what I use my box for. And... Okay, I have a box that I think would fit. Oh my gosh, does this fit? Okay, it just barely fits. Okay, so my paper will fit. I wonder if I can just take this whole thing and pop it in there. Let's try it, okay? I might have to move my audio a little bit. No, this isn't gonna fit while it's still on here. Okay, let's pull this up and tape these around the edges while we're doing this. Just tape it around the edges. Thankfully, this texture paste is kind of holding it all together anyways, because it's so thick and yummy. Okay, good. Okay, Atlas is doing our thing. So now, wish me luck that these will actually spray. Because <laughs> that's the biggest thing, right? Will they spray? Um, this one is not saying yes. <laughs> this one's saying no, I don't wanna. Okay, you're out. <laughs> um, let's try this red. Oh. Okay, we got some red. Let's see if we can get some orange to go. That would be great. And then let's see if we can get the yellow to go. That, that would be perfect. Okay, this needs to be stuck a little more together. Come on. Work. Yes, okay, amazing. We did it. Okay, this is gonna be like all messy. If I pick this up, it's gonna be all messy, but I don't want to lay another paper down on top of here because I don't want to mess up the texture of my texture stuff. Otherwise, I would normally just take another piece of paper and lay it on top of there. Okay. Y'all want to see? Ah, so amazing. So amazing. So amazing. It turned out so good. <laughs> so good. Okay, now my fingers also <laughs> got some ink all over them. But here we go. I got the texture spray on here and or the texture paste, the modeling paste is on here. So all of these little hearts have dimension and then I have the spray on top of them. And oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh, I love this. I just love this stuff, you guys. I just love it. So check it out. So you can still see the little spray marks on top. And because the texture paste is really holding it to the stencil, I really don't have like too many little messy areas. Like right here, there's a tiny little bit of spray that kind of hit the side. But other than that, like there's not really any messy areas because the the stencil was really being held in place good by that modeling paste and it's just so nice. I wish the purple had sprayed because I think that would have been nice to have some purple and then because the purple didn't work I didn't use any pink but I kind of got some sunset colors in here so <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> um, so do we have the chance to see replay? Absolutely. Actually when I click complete on this the replay should come up almost automatically and you can find that on the scrap happy youtube channel and it goes into a playlist so actually all of them go into the playlist so you can actually just go to the happy at home playlist like go to the youtube channel go to the happy at home playlist and then you can actually go through and just watch any of the ones that you've missed from this year last year or the year before and i think actually like that would normally be like about 20 per year, but I did a few, like I did every other week a couple times in other months. So there's even more sessions there. So isn't it pretty? Oh my gosh. 
I can make backgrounds all day with this stuff, says Gina. It's so much fun. <laughs> exactly. So much fun. Okay, so let's review what we've done today. We've got this beautiful one with the hearts where we used the dilution spray. And I ended up using three colors because I actually sprayed. I'll have to see if I can get my little purple um, nozzle going. I take them over to the sink and I use water and I spray and I try to spray and I get them. You can get them going, it's a pain in the butt. So um, yeah, so I ended up using three colors of this. I used the cherry pie for the red, squeezed orange and pure sunshine. Those are the dilutions that I used. And we used this Liquitex flexible modeling paste Seriously, this stuff is awesome. So awesome. So awesome. Okay, I don't want to get this like messed up. Let me put it somewhere. We also did this one with the modeling paste with the cloud stencil from Scrapping Reflections. And for these ones, I used three colors of Nouveau paste, the Nouveau Glacier paste. I used the white, which is winter white the pink, which is Frosted Petal, and the blue, which is Sea Sprite, to make these shiny little textured clouds. So gorgeous. And then when we started this all off, I did this stencil, the Mind Block stencil, and Mining Block, I think it's called, from Scrapping Reflections. And for this one, I used the leftover bit of my light modeling paste from Liquitex also. And then I used some of the colors from Vicki Booten, um, her watercolor markers. <laughs> Diane says, thanks Alice for another great class. I love those stencils. Oh my gosh, yeah, so beautiful. Um, Deborah's asking, can you spray the texture paste and apply so that you get smooth sparkle instead of droplets? Um, you could spray it on there and then just like smear it so that it's um so you'd get more of this effect if you if you smeared it once you had sprayed it you could totally do that rather than get the little droplet effect if you don't want the droplets you could totally do that like this kind of stuff you can take this and just smear it on your paper too like that's totally fine and uh take it straight to your paper without stencils but obviously like We've got some great stencils to work with, so so why not? But yeah, if you if you wanted to like, especially since the modeling paste was still um, wet, if you smear it after you spray it, it's gonna be it's gonna be great. Like it's gonna be awesome. So uh, yeah, let's go back here. So if you enjoyed this, if you end up playing with some texture paste or something like that for your scrapbooking, then please like tag me if you share it on Instagram, be like, hey Alice, look. So at Alice Bull is my Instagram handle and uh, you can find um, some of the things, I, I, I'm usually a little behind in sharing, but I do try to get uh, more layouts and fun things that I'm creating onto my Instagram. If you're not on my email list and you wanna hear about other fun things I'm doing most Fridays, sometimes Saturday or Sunday, I send a, a Friday five email. It is my sunshine email. I call it sunshine because I send you five things that are something fun and inspiring to me. Um, it's also the place where I let you know about upcoming load challenges, just in case you wanna know about those. I let you know about our um, scrapbook live sessions that we do once a month. I let you know about things like this happy at home series. Um, and also just to let you know like what's been on our blog recently because I tell you our designers that are featured on our blog have been killing it with amazing things like I have just been so inspired by their blog posts and it's like you know it's so overwhelming because they're writing these to share with our blog like on our blog on our public space and like the amount of inspiration that they're bringing, it's like they got it going on. So it's been wonderful. And then um, 
I try to find something else that's like fun and inspiring. Sometimes, like a couple times recently, I've actually shared my own things because I made some really fun reels showing some of my rainbow stenciling or something like that. And I've been able to put that onto um, my Friday Fives as well. Sometimes I find somebody else's. Um, sometimes I see that one of our blog team members has shared something really cool, so I'll share that. Sometimes it's just somebody completely different. Sometimes I get introduced to somebody that like has a really cool YouTube or a really cool Instagram or has a really cool post about something and then I share that. It's just something that's really, really fun. Like scrapbooking is amazing and I think we all should support each other. And so when I people see people doing cool things, I just, I want to share it with you. Um, so that's through that, scraphappy.org slash subscribe. And then um, if you're looking at my favorite products, I'm pretty sure I have Liquitex modeling paste listed, probably. Um, but I'll have to go and have a look and uh, I'll see if I can actually get that updated today. I have not had a chance to update some of the things that I wanted to on there, but that is where I post my favorite products. So if you're look, like thinking, uh, what stenciling company did Alice like? Where did she get her fun stencils from? My favorites are listed there. If you're wondering like what kind of mixed media stuff does Alice like? That's definitely listed there. I talk about some of my favorite things for that there. Um, yeah, like what kind of trimmer does she rely on? Then, you know, I have that listed there. And some of it is affiliate linked, some of it is not. So if you choose to use my affiliate links, I always appreciate it. It's just this extra little um, bonus, which I do appreciate. And it doesn't cost you anything when you use an affiliate link. It's just, um, it helps out creators. So I'll always use them, I think. Like I, I use other people's when they introduce me to something cool because I, wa I really want them to get that extra little um, bit of support so yeah that's that's today tomorrow we we will <laughs> sorry can't talk i'm so excited tomorrow we will be back for great friday and it will be a fun day of creativity tomorrow not 100 percent sure i'll figure that out and then i'll get it posted and i'll get it pre-posted so it's a little bit easier to find the live thank you so much for joining me today um yeah, I'm so happy to share some of this stuff with you and hopefully, you know, you'll be inspired to create something cool. And if you do, I'd love to share that on my Friday Five. So if you're like, Alice, Alice, I did a thing, I did a thing, let me know. Because <laughs> I love sharing your stuff, right? I love seeing the things that we make that are awesome. And uh, yeah, don't forget that the load, the load is open right now for registration. Um, scraphappy.org slash load, which is uh, the, the link to sign up. If you're not a Scrap Happy member already, if you're a member, you get load. So you don't have to sign up. <laughs> so you don't have to sign up. And I just want to say thank you to you for taking time to spend with me today. You're a star and I love that you spent some time with me and uh, hopefully you're leaving more inspired and ready to do fun things with your scrapbooking. So until tomorrow, happy scrapping everyone. Bye.